right, we're back with another video. This is Harmed. Uh, this is about the only one that I've taken a look at so far. Uh, this one's the Assassin. And it's a uh, it's flipper. It's got some contoured G10 going on, which is pretty cool. And this is the uh, the updated version that actually has a pocket clip, because apparently the original version of this never did. Which, I guess, makes a little bit more sense as to why they'd call it an assassin, because, um... Well, you probably don't need a uh, knife anywhere near th this long, being, you know, three and three quarters of an inch. That, uh, you're just going to be carrying concealed. <laughs> Uh, a lot of places really frown on that. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is technically gray, but uh, I think it's just as much blue as it is gray. The uh, the pocket clip on it is interesting. It's got a button screw on there, but uh, yeah, overall it's not too bad for uh, using. And, uh, yeah, it is just kind of a, uh, fold-over job, but it does a really nice job of being fairly discreet. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of works. This guy's got pretty darn simple construction. Um, you got basically the, uh, the spacer over here that, uh, this screw for the pocket clip goes in. And you got the pivot. And, uh, well, we'll find out in a minute, but I think there's probably a pen or two for these uh for this g10 backspacer that's going on here um so something that for one like I, i'm assuming this is supposed to be an h kind of logo uh, on the uh on this guy here but uh man for whatever reason it really looks like the unreal tournament logo like i'm probably dating myself because those games haven't really I think the most recent one that came out was 2004, maybe. So, yeah. Ooh. But uh, still, that's what it reminds me of. Or at least, you know, well, the Unreal Engine. I don't know. You know, Fortnite players and whatnot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this guy is interesting because the liners, as well as the blade, are um, coated. I don't know what they're coated in, but they're certainly coated in something. And this guy's actually got uh, those little liner cut out things that uh make it a little bit more comfortable for your finger to have a little landing pad which uh that's a nice little touch i do like that this was one of the first knives that i've got that that had those um certainly not the last but yeah this guy does have that gray kind of coating going on there it's 14c 28n and uh well you can probably Maybe not, but uh, I do see that I got a little bit of a rolled edge going on at the very, very back end of that. Ah, well, I can fix that easily. But, yeah, you have uh, a little bit of a scalloped out area there for a liner that's uh, very easy to um, get to, even though it doesn't really have uh, any jimping or anything going on there. Speaking of which, jimping, yep, it's got some of that right where you basically want that. So that's pretty darn handy and thoughtful of them. And you do have a fuller kind of up top that uh, does make it look a little less thick than it actually is, but it all meets at that, uh, that stabbing tip. And, uh, well, because I have it around and I just did another one, it does kind of remind me quite a bit of the, uh, the Artisan Cutlery Shark. They're kind of uh, similar in size and everything, but uh, the shark is uh, shadow boxed. And, uh, well, the blade stock is a bit thicker on it. But yeah, still those uh, same kind of stabby um, kind of knife blade, which, hey, I mean, it makes sense as to why they would call it an assassin. It's... Um, Pretty darn close to a uh, fall shutty. So, yeah, it's got some nice action on it. How about if I uh, take a little peeksy on the inside here? Huh? Just got that one screw for the uh, the pocket clip, which 
also is wedged pretty deeply into the G10 there. Yeah. And hey, it actually has like a little uh, cleft in the middle of that. So it's not just uh, just a square. So keeps it a little bit more, um, you know, in line. Yep, there's the uh, standoff or whatever you want to call it on the other side. But yeah. There's that. So yeah, you can see we definitely got some skeletonization going on. Alright, this guy actually has uh, another screw on the inside. It's not actually a pen. So that's kind of interesting. And yeah, it's T6. So there we go. Now I can just pop and swivel. And yeah, this guy's got uh, ceramic bearings as well. So pretty sweet. There's um, a decent amount gathered on these cages as well, which uh, might help with uh, some of the action there. This guy also has um, the, uh, the bearings seated into the liners rather than the blade, which for whatever particular per reason, I tend to prefer. But, uh, yeah. It's... Now, it does have a, a, a D-shaped pivot. However, the only reason that thing is kind of there is to ori orient the, uh, the direction of that logo there. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise, and it has quite a bit of play, but uh, still, it works out quite well. And, uh, hey, they have pretty aggressively skeletonized these liners, which is great. I, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the attention to making it nice and light without, you know, Screwing up any uh, structural integrity. And it's also got the uh, blade stop there. I'm actually happy that uh, this knife doesn't particularly have that design where they, uh, they incorporate the blade stop into the blade and then have holes open uh, at the end of the liners. This is a little bit more enclosed and complete of a uh, thing and uh, well I appreciate that it is always interesting seeing um, a uh, another screw on the inside of something it's not something that you see very often but you can see it's very much flush with the liner it was great. Why didn't they do that on the pocket clip? Just, oh well. <laughs> that's just, that's just me always finding something that could, uh, you know, probably be improved. But, uh, oh well. Yeah, super, super simple construction though, with basically those three screws. And you can technically remove the pocket clip if you want, but you're going to have that hole where it's supposed to be, as well as uh, the screw might stick up a little bit proud because of, uh, you know, the fact that it's not all flat and everything and it's still going to be sticking up there. So, yeah, still quite nice as far as the action goes after just throwing them back together but uh, I probably did have the uh, pocket clip just a little bit too tight I basically will adjust it until I don't feel any blade play anymore and then yeah so there you go there's the, uh, the Harden's Assassin which is uh, another one of those Really pokey, stabby, stabby knife kind of things. 
Um, quite comfortable. Uh, the G10 contouring on them is very nice. Like I said, I do like the, uh, the landing pad for the, uh, the index finger or I guess whatever finger you might be flicking it open with. Nice access to the liner. Um, and the, uh, the gray coating on the, uh, the blade and the liners is, uh, fairly attractive. It does have, you know, their logo, um, or at least one of their logos billboarded on the clip. And, uh, well, that's doesn't bother me in the least, but it bothers some people. So it's worth at least pointing out. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, another in those lines of, um, Something like, uh, you know, the CJRB um, Briar or the Artisan Cutlery Shark. They're, they're all basically <laughs> designed to um, to have uh, a very effective penetration. Not necessarily for the, uh, the thickest um, or the, uh, the widest hole, as like a Tonto would do but very, very good at penetrating if you're looking to do any of those sort of cuts. And the steel on this thing, the 14C28N, holds up quite nice and well. Uh, actually kind of impressed that they, they wanted to use that instead of uh, D2, like uh, many, many other uh, Harns models, as well as, well, many, many other um, uh, Chinese-based uh, companies. CGRB and Artisan Cutlery, uh, you know, Tucson, uh, <laughs> Civivi, uh, you name it, basically, uh, Kubi, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do, uh, I, I'm really appreciating 14C28N quite a bit recently. Um, and, uh, yeah, this was one of my first knives that, uh, had that in there, uh, since when I picked this up, the, uh, the two sons that I had picked up already, uh, were still using D2. They were still on that first hundred or so, um, model numbers that, uh, they were using, uh, D2 for, but they've mostly switched over to, uh, 14C, 28N. And in the right hands, you get... As near as makes no difference, depending on, you know, your, your youth situation, about the same uh, amount of performance. But, hey, this is actually um, more stainless. So, you know, people in Florida or, I don't know, Thailand or something like that <laughs> will have a much easier time taking care of this than they would uh, any of these D2 knives. So there you go. That's uh Wonderful, slim little thing. Uh, I really wouldn't call this a gentleman's knife. It is way too large for that. You know, with a 3.75 inch blade. Um, but hey, I appreciate any knives that are around that size because they actually fit in these mitts. And, uh, well, that's important for me. So... <laughs> There you go. There's the Harns Assassin. Uh, I guess the upgraded uh, variant that actually has a pocket clip. Pretty simple construction, but uh, really made quite nicely for the uh, for the low price that these guys end up going for. I think somewhere in the mid 30s, if I remember right. It's been a while, but I think that was around what I paid for it. So cool. I well, I've been Jerry. This is Totoro because. Uh, I wanted some variety, and uh, it made me happy. So uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, yo.